So we're here today to answer a very important question, and that is, have FL Sun lost their minds? This is their latest 3D printer. This is the FL Sun S1, and it's gotta be the fastest 3D printer to ever exist, at least in terms of a production-ready machine. So right now I have fired up the eight-minute Benchy that it's got preloaded onto the machine, and as you can see, it's quite fast and it's quite loud. So uh, let's open the door up a little bit and you can hear, you know, it's got a very loud fan and I've actually silenced it a little bit. This is what it sounds like without any treatments, but I just put a little baffle and uh, stick a sock in it up top. Now, I don't know if the manufacturer recommends that, but that's what I'm doing to manage the sound a little bit. And this machine is actually pretty quiet when the fan isn't on. It's just when it fires up that turbo style CPAP fan, it gets pretty loud. So if I make a print profile that disables that or something, I think I could still have it running in my office and being relatively quiet, quiet enough for me to work around. Well, anyways, uh, how did they make this printer so fast? Well, it all comes down to the construction and the component selection that they've used. So these large, broad panels on the sides, I'm not sure if you can see them on camera, but let me just tip it at an angle and you can see this is about a five inch or six inch thick or wide beam. And it's got some good thickness to it onto the inside of the frame. And this is just a solid piece of extruded aluminum. And we've got die cast top and bottom pieces. You know, this thing is super solid. It's essentially like an eggshell of high strength aluminum, just containing this thing and making sure that there's no unwanted vibrations. So, you know, it's able to move extremely fast and not shake around too much. Adding to the stiffness of all of the components in here, we've got thicker belts. Thicker belts aren't as stretchy as the thin ones that you normally find on a 3D printer. We've also got HG style linear rails instead of the MGN series that you see on most 3D printers, whether that's gonna be your Vorons or your Bamboo Lab A1 printers, those are usually using MG style rails, which have two rows of ball bearings, one on either side, and those will recirculate to support the linear motion and prevent out of plane movement. But um, on these ones, they actually have four rows of recirculating bearings to help better support the rail as it's moving up and down. So that's just gonna make this thing even stronger and stiffer and have it be able to move under load without having too many consequences. Also, we've got servo style stepper motors up top. They're closed loop control and they've got like a little encoder on there that's gonna be able to detect if there's any skipped steps or anything. So that's great for error correction, but it also allows them to push the servos a little bit harder and move the axes even faster so, you know, that's again adding to the high speed of this machine. We've also got some carbon fiber rods here. That's pretty standard for Delta printers these days, at least on the high-end machines. You know, carbon fiber tubes that just help support the motion and, you know, keep everything exactly where it needs to be while being as light as possible. So we already talked about the turbo style CPAP fan. It's kind of embedded in here, so I can't pull it out and show it to you. But if you just Google CPAP fan, you'll see what those look like. It's got a high speed turbine blade that spins up just like a car's turbo. And it, I mean, it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner or something similar where it's just forcing the air through this tubing, this tubing right there. And that allows it to push a ton of air down to the hot end and cool off your parts extremely quickly. The advantage here is that you get a really powerful fan but you're not having to carry it on the tool head, which helps further reduce weight and lets them hit those high accelerations. Now, we're halfway through this Benchy and it's only been four minutes, which is absolutely crazy. I never thought I'd have a machine this fast, but here we are. Um, and, you know, we're just printing away. I also want to talk about the hot end. It's got this custom design. It's uh, quite a bit longer than a Volcano hot end but it's not quite as long as a super volcano hot end. So they've got some interesting technology in here to just speed things up as much as possible without, uh, I guess, breaking the bank. These are relatively standard components. It looks like they're using a standard volcano length round uh, ceramic heating element. So that's not gonna be too expensive, but they've got a custom machine heat block on here. 
and they've got a standard nozzle. This is just a regular V6 style nozzle. So you could put a CHT hot end in here if you want, but from what I can tell, they've already got some kind of flow splitting device inside of the heat brake or uh, up towards the top of the hot end. So you don't really need that out of the nozzle. But in any case, we're getting these over a thousand millimeters per second move speeds or print speeds actually when it's doing the infill. Also, this is my first Delta style printer. I kind of joked about how nobody likes Deltas and you know what, they're actually pretty cool. This is insanely fast and FL Sun is actually delivering something new to the market. Speaking of the market, you know, the 3D printer market, I think this thing, the only goal was to just make a high speed printer without compromises. And I think they've pulled it off here. It's heavy, it's big, it's relatively expensive, but you know, not really for what you're actually getting here. And you're just getting an insane device. It was relatively easy to set up, sort of difficult to ship. I had uh, a call from FedEx and they were like, hey, we're gonna have to move this thing tomorrow. We didn't realize it was so heavy. So uh, yeah, I went down to FedEx and picked it up myself. It's not too bad. I mean, I could move it around. It would be nice to have some wheels built into the thing, but uh, I just had a hand truck and carted it around, no problem. In terms of setup and assembly, it was super easy. I just attached this front display and put the glass panel on the door and we were good to go. All the setup was automated. It automatically did its input shaping and bed leveling. So yeah, I mean, this is FL Sun's challenge to all the other 3D printer manufacturers to up their game. I think it is a little bit much for most people, but if you want an absolutely terrifyingly fast 3D printer, this is the one to get. We're gonna be taking a much closer look at this in a future episode. This is more of just like a first looks and validating the benchy quality on this machine. Um, but yeah, from the outside, what else can you see? We've got this, whatever this meter is. I suppose it's measuring something, I don't know. Uh, we've got two USB-A ports, so it's gonna be really easy to plug in your SD card readers and flash drives and all that kind of stuff. No problems there. And we've got a power button to turn this thing on and off and a really large touchscreen display. This is bigger than most 3D printers touchscreen displays. And would you look at that, we're already done. So yeah, I guess I'll have to wrap this video up. I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but first let's take a look at this benchy quality. See if, you know, a sub 10 minute benchy can actually be any good in terms of print quality. I've got some very directional lighting in here, so we should be able to highlight any inconsistencies in the benchy. But overall, this is extremely passable print quality. And even if we slowed it down a minute, that would give this thing a lot more time to be able to produce a quality product. Um, but yeah, this is really remarkably good for how fast that was. Even the edges here, they're not rounded over at all. The input shaper didn't have to be very aggressive with smoothing out these external perimeters. And that just has to do with how light that tool head is and how much motor power they have driving it. So, so yeah, uh, the question of the day is, has FL Sun lost their mind? Well, I'm not the best person to ask. You should probably seek someone with more reasonable expectations, opinions, but I really like this thing. I think it's great that they're coming to the market with something that's just stomping everything else in terms of print speed and quality. There's all sorts of really nice features on here, like you have an integrated spool holder that can even heat the, the filament and dry it out. We've got desiccant. Like there's all sorts of cool touches on this machine and it's not half-baked at all. They took their time to build this right, to design it right, and they've released a stellar product. There were a couple of delays in terms of getting it out there, but I think they really did the right thing. They took their time and now we've got an insanely fast printer. So yeah, I think maybe FL Sun have lost their minds, but I'm all for it. We need more printers like this. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe. If you like this episode and want to see more about the FL Sun S1, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor right here at the end real quick. And that's going to be my Patreon supporters. So if you want to see more independent content like this, make sure to head over to Patreon and sign up. And uh, yeah, I give you updates over there and maybe some early sneak peeks at some projects and videos that I'm working on. So that's all good stuff. 
Anyways, I appreciate you all for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next episode.